Come find out what the six hobby hacks are that you can't live without. Spiky bits. Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear, and today we are hitting you with 30 years of hobby knowledge boiled down into six things you need to know that you'll probably start using on a daily basis in your hobby life now that I drop these bombs on you. But chances are you might know one or two of these because let's face it, there's only so many ideas out there and we share them all all over the place through the internet and you know watching other videos and kind of, um, you know, there's only so many lessons learned out there. But some of these, once you see them, you might be like, dang, why haven't I been doing that all along? Because I know I was as soon as I picked up on them. So let's check it out. Let's hit you with number one. So here it is, the ubiquitous GW paint pot. We haven't seen a change in this bad boy, I wanna say since 2013, maybe longer, I forget exactly, but this is it, the GW paint pot, the most basic of basics. And of course, if we are counting them, and we absolutely are, we got the tall boy right here, the GW shade, and now uh, weathering pumice and I think they're using it for those new undead kind of shades that are coming out as well So we got little boy and tall boy right here now. Why am I showing you this? Well, let's break it down real quick. So obviously we know These things have a tendency to dry out and you can tell if it's been open on the shelf by if these little teeth right here are broken open now what you may or may not have picked up on is once you open this the bottles themselves may or may not be of a good or bad design depending on what their you know uh, actual design is for I don't know they have this little piece back here that kind of locks in place to keep the lid open to allow the paint to drip back down into the reservoir right here or the rest of the bottle now sometimes that doesn't always happen depending on uh, frequency of use and all sorts of different things this may actually, or just how much paint is in the top half right here, you may have paint that actually leaks down around and into your back seal right here. And you start to notice that when you go to close your paint pots, there's a bunch of chunky monkeys back here that makes closing it a little bit more difficult. That's where my two example paints step in here. Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. I used these two summers ago to pretty much exclusively paint the flesh on my big fatties, my Beast Claw Raiders. And as you can imagine, yep, I definitely just opened this right up and I let it set and just kind of drawed or drew the paint from the top right there, which is a no-no. And as you can see, slowly over time, paint got back here and started to crust down the back, which kept the bottle from completely sealing shut. And as you can see here, the inside is starting to dry out. So, what's the solution for all that? Why am I showing you this? Well, the easiest way to fix this problem, and this one's even worse, it's already completely, for the most part, dried out because look at how much paint seeped into right here. I'm gonna take a minute and dig all of this out and show you just how much paint that actually, doesn't look like much, but I guarantee you, when I dig all of this out and around this lip right here, it's gonna be a ridiculous amount in a pile just to illustrate the point of how much that is costing us money as hobbyists because it's allowing the air to get up in there and dry out our paints. So lo and behold, that is a large amount of paint. Think about how much paint you use out of a bottle at any given setting and that gives you an idea of not only how much was jammed down in there, but now look is how much got destroyed. This is a $4 bottle. Like <laughs> we buy a lot of bottles of paint. It's crazy, right? So just to keep that in mind, there really isn't a whole lot of fixes, although I do have a couple ideas for you. And one of them is going to kind of lead into our next hobby hack. The first is to, if you start to see this stuff drying out, just get in there with a little um, sculpting tool or some sort of scraper tool and just dig it all out, you know, while you can, while you notice it's a problem so it doesn't sit around 
for two years and then you literally dry out the paint because now I have to buy another bottle of Kitty and Flesh Tone. Although I think I might have an air paint. I'm actually not sure. I went ahead and dug out the Bugman's Glow. Um, and that's right here. So there was a, a good chunk over there as well. But I don't think this Bugman's Glow is going to make it another year. So be careful. So the big steps here to take away. Be careful when you open your paints. Be careful when you're using the paints from the top itself. And if all possible, you can always decanter, I think they call it, your paints into uh, actual dropper bottles themselves, believe it or not. Now, this is the air paint here. This is a 15 mil clear bottle. You can get these off Amazon. I think that's 50 of them for like 25 bucks. It's probably even cheaper, to be honest. I forget, It was. I was like, oh, okay, that's really cheap. I'm gonna buy those. And there's a bunch of different articles on the internet. There's several actually on Spiky Bits as well to show you how to get the paint into these dropper bottles. It's a lot easier to do with air paint, but if you're you know, forced to use semi-dried out paints, I wouldn't even try to do something like that. But there's some tricks to getting paints like this into these bottles, whether you know you actually put it, mount it to something with a little bit of poster tack. You can add in a little flow improver, just a little bit. And what it does also is gives you a little bit of, um, it's, a, it's almost like a, like a drying retarder, but also a bit of a matte medium all kind of mixed into one there. So it's going to give your paints a little bit of life as long as you don't overdo it. Just get them to the point where they actually drain into these. And then of course, if you can find little flask funnels, those would help as well. But those are just some general ideas. Again, there are several articles on the site that explains better how to get paint into these bottles. But long story short, decanter where you can, but be careful where you can't and dig out the rest. Now I realize the next hobby hack isn't gonna be quite for everybody, but it seems like in this day and age, everyone knows somebody with a 3D printer at the very least, or perhaps has access to a friend online that could print you some stuff as well. What do you need a 3D printer for, you might ask? Well, the answer is right here. This simple little contraption, believe it or not, will save you tons of time and effort Remember those tall boy bottles we were just talking about? Well, what's the one most frustrating thing about using them? Spilling the crap out of them as you're using them to wash your model. So if you can go over to Thingiverse, and I think we have an article on spikybits.com as well, you can get the template for these for free, and of course print them out. It's a very easy print job. Uh, it doesn't take very long, or if you know a friend, you could probably shamelessly bribe them to print you up a couple. So when you're using your washes and your tall boy paint pots, they don't fall over and you don't lose your $8 worth of precious, precious washes. Also another cool thing is this same contraption along the same lines, but it's a little bit different. It's more for the normal paint pots. And what this will do is prevent that whole clogging issue in the back you just use it to hold your cap actually i didn't do that so well but you kind of get the idea of how this will work it will hold your cap i think that's right and eh, it's probably needs to be rotated a little bit but either way you get the idea there look you're not going to get any junk klingons glip glops or anything around the lip of the paint bottle and you can use from right here or here or alternatively just use a wet palette or the palette paper or something like that just to keep your uh, paint bottles from crudding up but if you can't and you have access to a 3d printer and a little bit of time and a little bit of loose material even if it's pink <laughs> then you could print this bad boy out right here again I will probably be able to link the article to these uh, designs from Spiky Bits itself in the comments below. This next hobby hack, you're gonna be upset at your moms for not telling you about sooner, or perhaps you should be mad at yourself for not picking up on it sooner. It is just a roll of paper towels, but not just any roll of paper towels, in a handy dandy tabletop dispenser, right? Because how many times have you been doing something you're like, crap, I need a paper towel. And you're like trying to one hand fumble, you get glue all over yourself 
and whatever project you're working on, if you just had a little tabletop recessed thing that you could just grab one or two, by the way, Bounty is the way to go. It is the quicker picker upper. And if you get the one that you can separate into three different pieces, you'll find that you don't use your paper towels quite as much uh, as long as you can get a discipline of just tearing one section off at a time. But if the tabletop thing isn't for you and it's taking up precious tabletop space because we all, I'm fortunate enough to have like a four foot desk and I still run a space. So I know some folks out there might be working with the TV tray system or something like that. And obviously you don't have any room on that. But if you have a smaller space, but a little bit of underneath room, we can kick it back to the 80s with this. The old countertop space saver technique right here. The underslung paper towel holder. These things are like a dollar or two at most stores here in America, and they mount using some screws. I literally have this underneath my desk right now within a hand's reach because, uh, like I said, the tabletop one doesn't do it for me because we've always got so much stuff spread out. So if you have the space underneath your desk, this one might be the way to go. Our fourth hobby hack is actually something that a lot of folks don't really think about, but we have covered it in the past. A brush cleaner of some sort. Now, up until the last year or so, we used the master's cleaner. I've been using it for 10, 15 years. Uh, but then Slow Fuse came out with the Gentastics Drunken Brush Goop. If you are one of our supporters over on Patreon or you know, get shipments from us on Twitch through winnings or something like that or giveaways, then you probably got a sample of this in the mail already, but it's, it pales in comparison price-wise to the Master's Brush Cleaner. And you get, this is just a one ounce, you can get the larger samples too. But either way, they both work good. They both clean your brushes. This one doesn't work as good as the Gentastics Brush Cleaner. Let me show you some brushes real quick and then I'll show you how to use it. So here we have, and I showed you this before when we, when we reviewed Slow's uh, brushes. Here we have four generations, believe it or not, of Games Workshop. Well, I guess this one doesn't count because it's the same. But three generations of Games Workshop brushes. I just don't have the red one from the 90s. And what was cool about this is these brushes were basically ruined except for the shade brush. I've been able to keep that in good working order using Slow's brush group. But here you can see where this dry brush has been through the wringer, I was able to bring it back using a brush cleaner, letting it soak in overnight and then rinse it off. But you can see where it did have some paint damage in the hairs up top there, but around it got definitely cleaned out for the most part. Same with this one from the early 2000s. The top was pretty much ruined, but it's still usable for bigger kind of terrain. But you can see where there wasn't as much usage even 15 years later, I was able to restore those hairs where they weren't, you know, ingrained in and such. So it's pretty amazing when you think about the age and the ability to still clean that. And then over here, this one was pretty much the same, but it's a little newer brush, about five, six years old. So we were able to really bring this back to its fullness and kind of get it back to working order. Now, all of these didn't just happen, you know, well, hey, let me just use this stuff and it's going to magically like fix itself i had to soak it in the brush group i left it out overnight then rinsed it off you know really worked it in because it's designed to work just like hair just wash it like you would wash your hair it's very simple just get a little bit of this out and i actually have some brushes right here that i used last night let me grab and check this bad boy out 25 dollars artificer brush from gw i've been able to keep mostly working order it's still got all its bristles it's it's starting to gum up here at the bottom eventually it'll start splitting and we'll lose it but that day has definitely been prolonged because of this uh cleaner 100 percent here i was using this last night while i was watching the, the last episode of brooklyn 99 i love that show so all you got to do is just get it wet get a little bit of the goop in here now sometimes i like to kind of jam back and get a little bit up in the ferrules here just kind of pressing down because that's where your pinch point is. And if you get dirt and stuff down in there, it becomes an issue. Now, there's two different ways to use it. You can kind of lightly pinch it between your fingers and kind of twirl and work it that way. Or you can get it in one of your folds of your hand right here 
and just kind of twist it and eventually you'll work all of the dirt and grime and everything off but I keep these pretty well clean so it's not gonna be a whole lot but just the fact that it is a conditioner as well it really helps out in between sessions especially if you you know go like a week or two without painting you're gonna be nice and crisp and ready to rock and there it is two great ways to extend the life of your brushes but I cannot say enough thing this is literally magic in a can right here it will save your brushes it will prolong your brushes if you have some of this stuff this master's brush cleaner this stuff will work too there's nothing wrong with it but i definitely 100 percent can say without any shadow of a doubt this stuff is way 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 better and you're probably better off with the gentastics drunken brush scoop how many times have you gummed up the end of the glue bottle only to get in there and have to cut off an end cut off an end until you get to the point where you have half a bottle of glue and no way to precisely apply it because you have no tip left on your glue I'm gonna show you how to keep that from happening observe your classic bottle of glue nondescript any old do of course you open it up and you discover that the last time you used it you didn't quite get the end all clear and now you have a clog and now comes the conundrum how do i clean that off if i take out my exacto blade and i start shaving i start losing material and eventually i'm going to lose this nozzle if i get out my clips or if i just make a cut eventually i can only do that so many times i will literally run out of nozzle before i run out of glue in this bottle so what do i do to keep this from happening and here's the answer you literally have the answer in your hands. This knife is going to save us, but not by using the blade part. We're going to use the flat edge to just shave down the glue as a bit of a blunt instrument here and work that all out of there. And hopefully with a little luck right around the tip to the point where it becomes clear. And even if it doesn't become clear, now we're right there where just a little poke will probably get us to where we need i actually had to work that a little bit more than i realized there because you can see all of these glue shavings around it there was actually pretty significant build up on the end but at the end at the very last stroke there we were able to pull the little final clog out and it shot off there somewhere but that is the easiest and quickest way you can keep your tip clean on your glue. Now everybody knows that same glue pairs well with Kicker, which is the accelerator that gets the bonds to almost form instantaneously and used sparingly uh, can allow you to move on with other parts of your project. But what you might not know is you see this little aerosol kind of depressor right here. You don't actually have to use that to apply the liquid inside of here to your parts to actually get a uh, conceivably more precise application. What I like to do with this is I unscrew it, I get the little feed line right there, and then what I'll do is it, I will depress the feed line at the end onto whatever I need. In this case, I'm just throwing it on some magnets so that they become a little bit reactive with the glue I'm about to use as I magnetize that next bit uh, to go into the armature itself. So don't aerosol direct apply just by depressing the end here, just like that. And our last hobby hack was inspired by something that you would find inside your front coat closet, believe it or not. This, well, I think you'll know it when you see it. This is a, a shoe holder. <laughs> Normally something you would put shoes in. Uh, they are clear. They sell them in uh, 24 holders, I think, from Amazon.com. I think it's like less than five bucks. But as you can see here, it's a great way 
to sort your spray cans. Now, maybe you don't have 24 of them to put in there. Uh, not everybody has the whole army painter system, but chances are you have a good grip of them that are sitting in a box, probably taking up valuable shelf and or floor space that you could just hide out of reach in an easy to grab format. You just open the door, look around, re you know, just grab which one you need, close the door, go out the front door or go out your back door and continue to prime your models. It's a great way, in my opinion, uh, to store your spray cans. So that's it. That's all six of our hobby hacks distilled down from 30 years of hobbying for you guys. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you picked up on something and please leave your hobby hacks in the comments below so we can all grow and get better with the hobby and you know, uh, use our time more efficiently because there's one thing we can't get and we all know what that is <laughs> more time <laughs> so if you like these kind of types of videos here on the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all these posts deleted scenes bonus content all the interviews and post game wrap up videos can be located in the hall of veterans on the longward.net visit the longward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. The longward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.